okay guys so i am your friendly strategist under uh, mg sir and to ensure that the uh, prelims becomes easy i along with the team have decided and divided your whole journey into few blocks and how will you get success with easy steps that we have ensured so we we'll keep things very very simple because there is very less time and the examination is not as much tough and complex as it is being made out by certain institutions so that is the clarity once you must know you must have received certain strategy videos by manu sir now what is going to happen is i will just divide the whole syllabus of your prelims into different parts so let's start how to command 2024 prelims examination how to ensure that you get very good marks so it is your upsc 2024 pre prelims remember that you will get only 2 hours and you are not expected to solve all the questions there will be 100 questions you have to leave certain questions maybe 10 15 according to the toughness of the paper ideally you should attempt 80 questions 85 questions this is the range you must aspire to receive aspire to attempt okay now the thing is we will divide the whole gamut of syllabus into different parts and then we will try to understand and which are the static part and which are the current affairs part so let's begin the thing is you have these portions quality economy and then comes your history under history comes your ancient medieval modern right so these three things these three portions most of the questions always are from your or largely are from your static portion these three static portion economy there are questions from your current affairs yes but it has its roots in the static portion that you have to understand then comes your other parts other parts are you i r international relation science and tech then your geography and environment these sections most of the questions are largely from your current here it is static largely it is current static so here in geography and environment again the question will be from current but they will be asking you the basics so some static part will be there in the geography and environment so if we count quality economy history ancient medieval modern and geography environment all these portions are having some static basic roots so what we are going to do now is we need to break down the whole gamut of the static portion into various blocks which are important let's see what we are going to do now let us start with our quality in quality what all is important first block from where most of the questions are asked are your basic concepts basic concepts what are the basic concepts what actually they are asking your concepts of democracy your concepts of rights issues your concepts of liberty your concepts of constitutional government these are the repeated questions and if you command all these you will be able to clear the examination very very clearly very very easily so this is the first block then comes your second part the second part is and the thing is that keep noting down 
you'll be getting a handout as well but keep noting down so second part is your constitutional framework which book you have to follow there is no doubt about that what is the book the book is nothing more than lakshmi kam if you follow lakshmi kam most of the questions of the polity can be addressed there is no need to read any coaching material at all because what i have heard is that many coaching institutions are saying lakshmi kam is not enough that is not good that is not true lakshmi kam is a self sufficient book if you follow lakshmi kam you can not only solve the prelims but mains as well mains questions as well so under the constitutional framework comes your preamble fundamental rights fundamental duties dpsp etc all these questions all these portions they are all important see there are so many chapters in the lakshmi kal itself there are so many coaching notes available so every coaching is giving one or the other material but what is important you have to understand these chapters are important constitutional framework then comes your parliament and state legislature parliament at center and state legislature at the state parliament and state legislature this is important entire complete portion what comes in the parliament the lok sabha rajya sabha and the president so this all you have to cover state legislature you have to cover and after that next portion is your judiciary judiciary we have an integrated judiciary so you have to cover everything in judiciary your supreme court high court lower judiciary everything should be covered because they are asking question from all the parts of the judiciary then comes your uh, which portion comes your executive executive under executive what all will be there you know prime minister council of minister like in the state cm com etc so these are the portions which are important for your polity preparation and remember that if you cover all the chapters of your lakshmi kam then you will be trapped so you should not be trapped most of the questions will appear from here and the golden rule of clearing the examination is that you have to attempt easy questions and moderate questions whatever questions you think that is difficult you are not able to attempt just leave them because even if you attempt easy questions moderate questions and you do well easy questions you will be not you have to be very very correct your accuracy has to be very high medium questions your accuracy has to be optimal and tough question you need not attempt prelims is the easier stage unnecessarily and uh, uh, unnecessary hawa has been created for this that you should be away from that fear now we will come to another part polity cover just the thing is that polity cover you have to realize that in polity there are so many things which are shown there but if you just look at the portions which are important this is the portion which is relevant now we'll come to your uh, two important aspects under history this is your history under history one part is your ancient and medieval another one is your modern don't just do only modern and indian national movement because questions are asked from all portions so you need to do all the things again which book to cover for modern rajiv wahid there is no other replacement there is no need to do anything else and central medieval the sources have already been told to you ncrts the art and culture part nitin singhania had written notes available in the market available online also we need not worry let's now cover what will be there in the ancient and medieval ancient and medieval this is modern ancient medieval 
Most of the questions are asked from Indus Valley Civilization, IVC. Then the Vedic era. Then comes your Jainism, Buddhism. Then comes your Guptas, Cholas, Vijayanagar Empire, and Mughals. Cutting it short, I mean, if you go to the ancient and medieval, all the questions there is vast. If you see what actually in Mughals, go to the PYQs. That's why I always suggest that whosoever wants to ace the examination easily should go and do all the PYQs from when 1995 to your know, 2023. It is easily available in the market. Any publication book you take, 1995 to 2023, solve all the questions. You will have, you will just generate a tendency to mark the answers correctly. Okay, ancient medieval done. Then comes your modern. In modern, what all need to be covered? Modern, they ask so many questions. So, modern starts from the period where the Europeans entered India. So, entry of Europeans. First thing, then comes your British rule impact, impact of Britishers. These portions are given separately in Rajivari, so you need not worry. What was the impact of the British rule on your administration, on economy, on social life, on uh, religious issues? What all was the impact? Overall analysis. Again, what to do? PYQs. Then comes your tribal uprisings, tribal and other civil uprisings. Okay, then again 1857, very important. Then comes your economic critique. Okay, after that what? Moderates, extremists, there were moderates, there were extremists. If you have read Raji Vair, you must have done till now. That one reading of modern history must have been done by most of you. If you have not done, need not worry. There are people who start preparation after the notification is announced. That was announced on 14th of January. So, 14th February. So, after that, they started uh, preparation and they will ace the examination with a very good rank. So you should not think that somebody who is preparing for 10 years because uh, recently only uh, we have seen so many aspirants, those who are appearing for interview, 21 year old, 22 year old, they were all appearing with, without much of the coaching, without much of creating the hoopla. So they are keeping things simple. So after moderate, your Swadeshi movement, Swadeshi and along with that comes your home rule. League movement, Home Rule League. You just go to the Rajivai book, you will realize that these portions are uh, mentioned explicitly there. After that, what comes? After Home Rule League, there comes the impact of Gandhiji. So, Gandhi, since the start, Gandhiji entered India from the Champaran movement. non-cooperation movement, civil disobedience movement, quit India, round table, all these, Gandhi and all subsumed here. Gandhiji, of course, many questions are there from Gandhiji's impact on uh, British rule. Then after comes your uh, terrorist movements or revolutionary movement, rather it should be called revolutionary because they definitely were not terrorists. Revolutionaries in the Indian national movement. INA. Revolutionaries. 
which revolution is over there like Bhagat Singh so their impact and their contribution especially because now their contribution is more important so development from Crips mission to 1947 Crips to Crips to freedom that is 1947 Crips mission started in 1942 this development, developments leading to the freedom, that is very important. Many questions appear from Crips to 1947. Then after that, Subhashan Bos, Shetaji Subhashan Bos, Indian National Army, Ajad Hind Fauj, that's called. So Bos, importance of Bos, and then the important personalities. Now in personalities, so many personalities are important. Any can be asked, but if you look at the repeated themes, you realize that certain questions are asked again and again. And if you are mugging up all the personalities just for one question, that is not very strategy. So you should not worry much, but you should prepare other questions well. We have covered quality, ancient, medieval and modern. After that, we'll come to your another portion, which is called environment. environment question again we should not be worried about the 500 500 pages thick book or some thousand pages book there is no need of any of these the thing is that you must understand what is being asked largely the questions of environment will be from current affairs but if you look at the static portion which you are covering here because see your prelims depends on your preparation of static portion Apart from that 2016 paper, which was largely current affairs based, and even if the current affairs based question is asked, many of the questions which will be known for uh, by many uh, aspirants. So, there, if you follow any magazine, any one source, you must follow any one source or maybe two sources to just cover the whole gamut of the current affairs. So, once you have covered the current affairs, you are equipped to answer all the questions. If the portion of current affairs is higher and largely, generally speaking, the static portion is really high. And if you have command over static portion, your prelims is easier. Why people are uh, taking it very difficult, making it very difficult and why it is becoming very difficult for people to clear prelims nowadays is that the knowledge base, the gathering of the information and the concepts, that is not happening. Because the reading habits of the people have not being up to the mark because see UPSC requires you to read things thoroughly and read quite a vast gamut of things economy, polity, history, environment, geography, art and culture so many things are to be studied and what is happening generally in the first attempt you are lost in the vast ocean of current affairs so you are not able to cover the static portion and if you are not able to cover the static portion what will happen when you face the examination you will realize that many questions you don't know, you feel that this is from current affairs, but actually it is from static portion. So your static portion preparation should be up to the mark. Now, in the environment, what actually is being asked, the first portion is your ecosystem. Under ecosystem, like what? Definition of the ecosystem. So many ecosystems are there. Food chain, food web. The species, the climax, everything, all these things. Then comes your biodiversity, the concept of biodiversity. Then uh, comes your pollution and environmental legislation. Pollution, all the aspects of air pollution, solid waste management, your water pollution, pollution, all the aspects. If you read any book, you'll realize that there are so many chapters which you want to read. That's why it's cutting down the portion to important ones. And if, if you just command these, you'll be able to clear. There's no doubt about that. Unnecessarily, it is being made difficult. Elevation technique gone, this gone, that gone. That is not actually true. And your legislation, environmental legislation. When we talk about environmental legislation, what does it mean? Environmental legislation means
your EPA Environmental Protection Act 1986 and other acts related to this environment laws which are very important you must be able to understand that since the IFOs is also involved with the UPSC prelims is being conducted is for your IAS examination and Indian Forest Service Board. So since the inception of IFOs 2013 onwards, environment portion has increased like anything. And many people are really flabbergasted that from where this environment portion is being covered, actually the environment portion is largely from your agriculture, geography and other portion of environment and biodiversity which are there in many books like Shankar book is there. But if you read the important portions, if you have command over the static ideas and you have brushed up your current affairs, the easy and moderate questions you can easily do. And so remember one thing, for prelims, whenever you are studying it, you must read things in detail. When I say details, what does it mean? From the point of view of choosing your current correct question from four options, it is important that you can Differentiate between option A and option B clearly, option B and option C clearly, option C and option D clearly. That approach is there. So read with the focus, that is very important. And for improving the focus, already strategies has been given to you using the technique of Pomodoro, 25 minutes, 30 minutes to start with, then increasing it by 5 minutes, 10 minutes, so that you reach to the unwavering focus of 2 hours, 2 and a half hours, and then when you enter the examination hall, go with the confidence and in that two hours, you must maintain your motivation and focus. So we have covered environment and now we are going to cover your geography. Under geography, what actually is being asked? See, geography is one of the most important portions if you talk about prelims. So there are so many things which will be covered in geography. So many questions come from geography. And if you have good command over geography, your most of the problems are over. What to study in geography? Largely your NCRTs as told 11, 12. Don't read 6 to 12. 11, 12 is enough. Once you have read your NCRTs, it's not about what you are studying, how you are studying. Have you read it in detail? Have you seen all the things in your uh, atlas? Whatever you are referring to, if you don't understand any concept particularly, have you gone to Google or nowadays the Bing and ChatGPT is there? Have you seen that in ChatGPT? Because if the technique is there, use it. Now, what actually is happening, most of your energy is wasted in going to the coaching institution, sitting offline there, and then coming back home tired and being involved in so many other issues that you are not able to focus. Okay, so we'll, we'll just see what actually to cover in geography. Firstly, is your that first portion, first chapter, physiography. What does physiography mean? Like interior of earth, the plate tectonics, all these. Earth, interior. What is there in the interior of the earth? The plate tectonics concept which is not very tough, it's not a rocket science to understand what is plate tectonics. Then, in the second portion comes your atmosphere. Atmosphere. Atmosphere, air quality, all the layers of the air, which is there in the NCRT again. Then comes your oceanography. Cold current, warm current, all this. Then your drainage pattern of India, drainage pattern of India. Remember that I am not saying drainage pattern in general, drainage pattern of India. Indian subcontinent has a particular drainage pattern which river is, is uh, originating from which place and what is the drainage pattern in general that you have to understand. See the divide, see it, it in NCRT, it is given, go to the atlas and see different rivers and then tributaries. Tributaries are being asked many a time. So drainage pattern. After that, what? After that comes your monsoon. Of course, monsoon is very important concept. So many questions asked from your monsoon. Monsoon, actual concept, monsoon, northeast monsoon, southeast, southwest monsoon, and northeast monsoon. Southwest, large part of India is covered through southwest, 
and north east monsoon is covered covering your Tamil Nadu eastern part. Likewise, how monsoon develops, what is the tropical cyclone phenomena involved with it, that you have to understand. Then comes your soil. Soil, what actually are they asking? What is the distribution of soil? Red soil, black soil, alluvial soil, how, where, where it is there, that you have to understand. Then comes your, as soil comes the crops, to the cropping pattern, the crops, again this, all are there in your NCRT book, crops. Which crop where? That's it. If you just refer the Atlas, even then you can uh, guess which crops are um, where. How many seasons of crops? So, uh, if you go, uh, go to the Atlas, you will see the crops are mentioned there. Which crops where? Okay. Now, now you have to see your uh, resources. With the resources, it's important that. We are talking actually about the mineral resources. When we say mineral resources, which mineral is found where? Like coal is found at which places? Metal is found, iron is found at which places? This distribution, generally they are asking now. Sometimes the name of the mine, name of the place where there is a copper, like Balagat is a place in Chhattisgarh where manganese is found. So like that general knowledge. That can be done again through your PYQs and NCRTs. That is it. See, resources should be limited and most of the time you must focus on the PYQs. If you focus on the PYQs, your work will be easy. Now, after covering all these portions, we will come to your uh, economy. Because economy will be starting and then you must understand in economy what to cover so that we get maximum marks that we'll be doing now itself. Okay, so in economy, see again, in the eco you see there are so many sources, 700 pages book, 1000 pages book, 50 lectures, 100 lectures by this, that, so many people. The problem is, they are not covering economy for UPSC. They are covering economy according to their own convenience, whatever they have studied. From UPSC perspective, you have to cut down the clutter. That is, so much of noise is there. And because so many things are being taught, even the aspirants get lost what to study, what not. That is why we are clearing the clutter and keeping it very, very simple. So there are the portions. Let's see which are these ones. The first portion in economy is your money and banking. Money and banking. Second portion is budget and fiscal policy. Third portion here is your external sector. Then comes your national income, national income. Poverty and unemployment. Now everything is given to you. You should note it down, write it down at one page, whatever has been covered for other portions here in the economy. Now we'll go into the details of these all these portions. What actually are the details from each and every part that we'll cover? Okay. From the money and banking part, which was the first part, we'll see what actually are being asked. Those basics of economics we see. See. What is being asked are these things. Firstly, is your basics of economy. And if you do these, you will not miss any of easy or moderate questions, tougher questions, one or two you might miss, that's not a problem. Basics. Basics of ego. One of the basics of eco, here, first portion is your GDP, gross domestic product, 
GDP, price of GDP, real GDP, nominal GDP, your uh, GDP deflator, your per capita income, PCI, your analysis and uh, trend of this PCI and GDP, per capita and GDP from last 10 years. What is the trend? Whether it is increasing, decreasing, remaining constant, what is the trend? The trend is always asked. 10 year trend. Last 10 year trend. And whenever you see the trend, take a simplistic view. Whether it is increasing on an average or not. Some day it is decreasing, some year it is decreasing, it's not going to affect the overall increase or decrease of the economy. So per capita income, whether it has increased steadily or not, likewise GDP increased steadily or not, most of the time the answer is yes, yes, the GDP is increasing and per capita is also increasing. Okay, now after that we come to your India's rank as far as GDP is concerned and per capita income. GDP and PCA. For all these, PPP basis, what is the rank of the Indian subcontinent? India's rank, PPP basis. Then comes your economic growth. Economic growth. When we say economic growth, what does it mean? Economic growth will mean your savings, investment, investment, capital, output, ratio, okay, all these topics, these are important topics, then we will go to in the growth only, economic growth only, some important topics from the relevance of what is happening now is your slowdown in the economy. That will cover your recession, your depression, then the slowdown is there, so there has to be recovery, the recovery of economy. So what kind of recovery? The U-shaped recovery, the V-shaped recovery or K-shaped recovery? K-shaped recovery that brings your inequality. And then once the inequality is there, various index of inequality. If you just see the index of inequality, you will realize what actually we are talking about. So it will be covered, but you have to see the whole uh, picture of economy is in front of you if you do this analysis. After that, the inclusive growth. What is the meaning of inclusive growth and human development index, these things. See, overall it may appear a bit tough for those who are not well versed with the economic terms, but if you just read them once and have an example which we will be giving in the classes, so you will realize that it is very easy. The same strategy was told to our students, they just had 15-20 pages of the whole economy syllabus. But if they look at some Patel Vertel's uh, classes, they had 1000 pages. So problem is that if you have 1000 pages, you won't be able to remember, your confidence will be low, you won't clear the prelims, as simple as that. So you have to clear prelims, you have to keep your notes very short, both in prelims and mains. Now after that comes your another chapter, poverty and unemployment. The first chapter we covered was your basics of economy. Now, unemployment has become one of the biggest challenges for India. So, it is an important chapter. Okay. So, in that, what actually are we supposed to read? Human capital.
and when we say human capital we are referring to what demographic dividend which we have a lot lot of any youth in the country if they have skills and they are monetizing their skills the economy will grow as simple as that then comes your unemployment types cyclic seasonal hidden unemployment all these things after that the um, unemployment and its measurement how do we measure unemployment if a person of higher cali caliber and skills is employed in a sector which is lower than the person's skills then is it an unemployment or not the answer is yes it is unemployment so that you have to know unemployment types and its measurement then comes your poverty poverty definition and when we say poverty there comes the concepts like below poverty line bpl what does it mean multiple poverty index mpi multiple poverty index given by which committees the committees involved and their recommendations regarding eradication of the poverty that is the coverage here so we cover this chapter after that we will covering the money and banking first we cover the basics then we cover poverty and employment then money and banking in money and banking what all will be covered in money and banking it is important to cover these questions one is your inflation 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 this inflation stag inflation types of inflation the target set by rbi that we go then measuring measuring the inflation how do we measure the inflation so your cpi consumer price index wpi wholesale price index ppi all this index purchasing power index now after that the inflation causes what caused inflation and what are its consequences if the inflation is there who suffers the most if there is inflation in certain sectors and other sectors are stagnant the stagflation which happens in many of the economies which may lead to recession and depression later on that's also a possibility causes and consequences and then the tools to control the inflation inflation control tools so tools to control inflation how do we control inflation of course there are so many ways through which rbi tries to control inflation and keeping a balance between the supply of money in the economy and the inflation control and then comes your uh, money money concept the concept of money what is money so in money comes your narrow money broad money then the virtual currency it's very important virtual currency because you see there were so many crypto issues going on in the last fiscal now it's not an issue because the rbi banned it the trade was banned and regulated mostly so virtual currency what are its issues that's also important after that comes your banking sector the banking sector complete banking sector is important what actually is banking within banking the importance of rbi and rbi's operations like open market operations omo your slr crr cash reserve ratio statutory liquidity ratio the importance of monetary policy mpc monetary policy committee the policy itself the monetary policy itself that is very important and then uh, the most of the questions here are from your recent developments some 
of other areas like marginal standing fund and net time and uh, deposit liabilities. All these things are there, but that is part of the RBI. And other banking, public sector banks, how the banking has been organized in India nowadays. Now we also hear about NBFCs, non-banking finance companies. So what is the issue of the non-banking finance companies? That is also be covered. After that comes your financial market. markets. Financial markets, how they are equipped, what are the issues. In the financial market, you have to understand the primary and secondary markets. Then comes your IPO, which is there in the share market, PPO, the investment done by angel investors. Then comes your seed funding, whatever is related with the startup world, seed funding, angel investment. Then uh, after this comes your bond market, bond and securities market, T bill, securities. Then your SEBI, Securities Exchange Board of India, SEBI. So overall share market and the primary secondary market, the division of the markets that is to be covered. After that comes a very important chapter which is your budget and fiscal policy. What happens is that you remember the provisions of the budget from the factual point of view but you don't understand the tone of the budget. So that is to be taken care of, the budget, economic survey. The analysis of it, very brief analysis, not the way things are being done by many, many of the coaching institutions, that is not required. Budget. Now, revenue on the seat, that what is revenue, how much revenue you have generated. Right, what is the expenditure and in that capital account, current account. Under that only your uh, important act which is being asked repeatedly is your FRBM. FRBM. FRBM Act. What's the target? How much of the target has been met? That will be covered here. FRBM Act. What is the current situation of the FRBM? After that comes your fiscal consolidation. Fiscal deficit and fiscal consolidation. That is to be there. Then comes your uh, taxation, tax, black money. Okay. Then within that comes your uh, tax GDP ratio. Base effect, then within that some concepts like pillar 1, pillar 2. That is to be covered primarily. Then comes your external sector. In the external sector, it is important that we cover the economy from the perspective of before 1991 and after 1991. External sector. Your uh, openness of economy, what does it mean, open economy? 
post 1991 whatever developments have been there that is to be covered in that again we'll cover the capital account and current account capital and current account are being covered because we are talking about the openness of economy and whether capital account convertibility should be there or not these things are covered here now after this we must focus on exchange rate issues and rupee appreciation rupee depreciation import export in the import export department we must know what is wto imf their roles and the important thing here is trade barriers these gamuts cover all the ideas as per as economy for the not only prints many part of mains are also covered but here we are focusing mainly on prints so that uh, prints part economy can be covering all these things the details of it will be uh, covered in other classes you must go through the whole scenario and whatever is static prepare it really well see nobody prepares 100% and if your preparation is just up to the mark even the nuclear prelims the problem is that now the very less days are there many people will lose their confidence many of them will start resources uh, referring to the resources which are out of their reach i mean they will be needing four five different resources that will create create lots of confusion in total you should not do that okay we'll cover economy and politics simultaneously in different portions as we have given you the chapter names all right thank you thank you very much